stumbled upon this LED ambient light and I was immediately intrigued by a few design features which I'll go over in this video, but more importantly, make sure to watch until the end because I discovered this product has something that I've spent so many hours looking for on Amazon but I've yet to find. So as I'm getting everything laid out, this does come in a 2 pack so I'll be setting half of the materials aside so we can just focus on building one for now. The first thing you're going to do is take your two aluminum tracks and secure them together using the black attachment piece. Next take your plastic diffuser sheet and feed it through the channel like I'm doing here. Here you can take the small plastic white pin looking things and push them through the holes and they will lock in place on the profile's cutout track. I've never seen this type of approach before but it actually worked out really slick. Next you're going to flip things over so the pins are facing down. Now I'm not exactly sure what type of LED strips these are, but they appear to be a high density RGB IC pixel with a separate channel for your adjustable warm and cool lights. This is definitely a step above for most all other non-name brand lamps I've seen out there on Amazon, so kudos to them. Now go ahead and remove the 3M tape from the back and secure it on the channel and position it in the center. And this is one of the design elements of this lamp that stood out. The fact that there's an actual profile you can firmly attach the LEDs to is a big deal. So many of these types of products will instead have a rod going down the middle that LEDs are either loosely hanging from or wrapped around. And as you can maybe already guess, later in this video I'm going to go over how I swap these strips out for some that I can control with WLED. So for this step we're going to bring the other side of the diffuser around and place it in the profile and secure it in the groove with the white pins just like we did previously. Here you can take the base and feed the power cord through and then insert the channel into the designated spot. Once the bottom is in, again use the pins to secure in place as the holes in the diffuser should be lined up perfectly with the holes in the base. For the top it's very similar to what we just did but we need to make sure we plug in the LEDs first. To control these, you can either use the physical buttons located on the top of the lamp or you can download the Rajdo Smart app from the Play Store to control via Bluetooth. On the app, click the plus icon near the top right, select LED Colorful, and then hit the disc at the top right again to save. Next click on the LED Colorful icon and then click the Bluetooth symbol at the top. Make sure your lamps are plugged in and scan for devices and they should pop up to connect. Now go back and you should be able to control both lamps at the same time. The app was super responsive during all my testing and I never had any connectivity issues. I won't spend much time on this because it's pretty straightforward, but I did want to mention a couple things that stood out. I was super impressed at how dim these got on the lowest brightness setting. I'm so used to a lot of products where you turn them all the way down and they're still way too bright to ever be used as night lights, but these you for sure could. The other thing I really liked were their preset animations. There were a good amount of ones you could choose from, and for all of them you had the ability to control the speed, brightness, and direction. So if you've watched many of my previous videos, you know most of my projects consist of me using WLED to control individually addressable LED lights. In the next couple minutes, I'll go over how simple it is to swap things out for some WS2812B pixels. First thing I need to do is remove the pin so I can get back to the center. Now you can really use any LED strip that your heart desires, but I would recommend using something that at least has 30 LEDs per meter. I'm for sure going overkill on this, but I'll be using a strip from BTF Lighting that has 100 per meter. So I've already connected some 18 gauge silicone wires to the beginning, and I won't go over those steps since I did just make a soldering for beginners video recently that goes over in great detail with close up footage of that process. From here I just need to remove the old LED strip and stick on the new one, and after that it's just reinserting the pins and putting the top and bottom sections back on. So if you're curious how I plan to bring these to life, I'll be using my usual ESP32 device that has WLED installed on it. And if you want to see the quick and easy steps on getting this set up, you can watch my full length walkthrough here. For power, I'll be using a 5 volt 10 amp block with a barrel plug adapter at the end. I'm first going to strip back all my wires, and next I'll be cutting two shorter pieces that will get plugged into my power supply. The red wire will be my voltage, and it's going to get inserted in the plus slot of the plug adapter, and the black will go into the other section. 
Next, I'm going to be using these awesome Wago connectors to split the voltage and ground connections. So this means that all I have to do is plug in my red voltage wires together. There will be two coming from the LED strips, one coming from the ESP device, and the main line coming from the power unit. I'll be doing the same thing with the black ground wires plus the ground from the ESP device, which in this example is white. As far as the data, I want these two lamps to always be synced together and running the same animation simultaneously, so for that I'll be using another Wago connector to split the data signal coming from the ESP device. And here I just have to connect the last voltage and ground wire from my ESP. I'll quickly just lay things down and power it up to make sure everything's running. And I'd say from start to finish, including soldering wires to the new LED strips, I was able to do this all in about one hour's time, so for sure not a very time consuming hack. I'll go over a lot more pictures and videos at the end, but I did not want to bring up the craziest part of this product and I doubt the company even realizes what they have on their hands. So there was about a 6 month stretch not too long ago that I ordered so many different types of materials and things off Amazon that I was hoping would work as some sort of plastic flexible diffuser sheets. I tried stencil papers, placemats, shelving liners, plastic cutting boards, you name it I tried it. I was looking for something that could diffuse LED lights at a relatively close distance without showing any hot spots but also had to be flexible for the types of projects I was wanting to do. And you probably already know where I'm going with this but after doing a few different tests the plastic diffuser sheets that come with this lamp are by far the best thing I've ever tested at perfectly diffusing LED lights at a close distance. If I had this material a while back I would have used it on my RGB baseboard build instead of paper. I would have used it in my latest DIY diffuser channel and I would have used it in my DIY Govi lamp instead of glass. I also could have used it in a lot of projects where I ended up having to use acrylic. I'll quickly give you an example of what I mean. Here I'm using some lights that have 60 LEDs per meter. I have the diffuser channel placed just a hair under one inch away from the strip. And hopefully it comes across the camera alright, but there are absolutely no visible hot spots at this distance. I already have a few ideas for a couple new projects that I want to do using this material, so hopefully I'll be able to get to those in the coming months. So all that to say, I'm definitely going to be reaching out to this company to see if they've ever considered offering the 15 by 33 inch diffuser sheets that come with the lamp as a standalone product on Amazon. I really think they'd sell a crazy amount of them if word got out about how great they are. Well that about wraps things up for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll leave you with a few more pictures and videos.